explain us more about what is the benefit of uh, after reading, after hearing, after, after explaining? You said the next step is remembering. So what can you explain? What is the benefit of remembering? Everything. <laughs> the whole process the is. Result. This is the result. That's the result. Exactly. <laughs> The result is to remember Krishna. <laughs> to remember to serve Krishna, to remember who I am and, and what this material world is about. The, 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 kind, the nature of the conditioned soul is forgetfulness. I'm still answering your question and you're talking. Uh, I actually I have to uh, translate to the translate. Oh, so you're doing Shravanam Kirtan. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I will see if I can remember it. Actually, I think I will always see if I I hope you are including Smarnam in it. Uh, yeah. I hope I will, I will, I will see later. <laughs> So, we could use a few more, but we're ready to go. We got a few books on the table over there if anybody wants to get a holy jail. And there's one book on the four regular principles. And uh, you can just see Johnny King out and go. I'll help you. I'm just at the back. The guy with the funny color clothes on. <laughs> the one that doesn't look like he fits in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the next slide. We we're talking about hearing and chanting and remembering. So Krishna is speaking this verse from the Bhagavad Gita. And after he speaks, he, re he reflects back to Arjuna and says, now you heard this more confidential knowledge. So the key word in this place is delivery. So Krishna consciousness is not so easy. It takes thoughtfulness. Thought to carefully think about what you hear and carefully think about how to carry it out. So deliberate. And then Krishna says, not just deliberate, but fully deliberate. And then, do what you want to do. Krishna trusts Arjuna enough to say that uh, you can do whatever you want, but first do at least deliberate. Therefore, when he knows that if you deliberate using your intelligence and reflect on that, one of the features of intelligence is discrimination. And discrimination helps us to understand how to carry out maybe so many opposing to discriminate between what we want to do and what we should leave behind. Say the question. It may almost lead means to discuss within yourself that you heard. You hear it and you discuss it within yourself. It's it's like almost like meditation, but it's more like it's more like this self discussion. I've heard it. Now do I understand it? What does it mean? How is it relevant to me? Reflection, deliberation. Okay. Okay, next verse. Okay, discussion. Here we go. Okay, now, you ready for this? This is a little personal exercise. Now, we're going to go through this little verse, and I want, you, I want different devotees to give me different meanings to what you read there. To give you all reading. All right, first we need a volunteer for reading. The people are miserly persons. Miserly. 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 
That means stingy, selfish. Waste their time in being over affectionate for family, society, country, etc. In the material conception of life, one is often attached to family life, namely to wife, children, and other members, even the basis of the skin disease. The Kripana thinks uh, that uh, he is able to protect his family members from death. Or the Kripana thinks that his family or society can save him from the marriage and his death. Such, such family attachment can be found even in the lower, lower animals who take care of children also. Okay, so it's called discussion. So what is it? Okay, who wants to discuss this? What does it mean? Okay. We're going to hear different discussions now. Um, I, I think uh, this is uh, mostly about the, this bodily conception of life that uh, we are attached to, to people and things uh, based on uh, our bodily conception. For example, uh, some people are more dear to, to us because they are related to us uh, as family members or they are in the same country. But uh, on, uh, this, uh, based on these principles, we, we cannot. Uh, what is it called in this verse? What does Prabhupada call it? Creeping. Yeah, he calls it creeping or miserly. And he also says, is what? My family, my country. My woman. My. My child. My. My. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the Moham. Yes? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I was just thinking that it's interesting how you go, I mean, whoever feels like that, it's called Kripana. Why? Because Kripana is taking what's there for me. He wants to enjoy. He feels that all that is at my disposal. I was just thinking why, how to look at this. Part you know, that's terminology that is used. What is Kripana? He miserly person, he doesn't want to serve, he doesn't want to give. He's just taking for himself. So he thinks everything is for himself. He's not affectionate because he's very generous, he's affectionate because he's thinking this is for my enjoyment. And what and where is that explained? Um, yeah. Well, he thinks like that. Yeah. And, and then, um, also there is that question of death. Mm -hmm. What is the basic principle of this whole thing? Selfish. The verge of death. The verge of death. We are born and die and born again and die. That's, that's a point. There's another point that I'm looking for. Why is he called Kripana? Right, is it because um, uh, he or this person uh, misusing the human form of life? That's one point. Um, okay. Why is he different than other forms of materials? What's his unique... Don't use uh, knowledge, very knowledge. He doesn't have any. <laughs> he doesn't have any knowledge. There is no God in Well, that may be there also. But he is. He sees everything in terms of his limited sphere of influence. Outside of that, in other words, he makes distinctions. This is my family, this is your family, this is your country, this is my country. And it's all about me and mine. And me and mine means 
Mine means animal, and me means means human being with no knowledge. I am. This is. But he doesn't know that nothing belongs to him. But he thinks this is this is mine, and he is. He doesn't. It doesn't say affectionate. To have affection for family members is not a disqualification for spiritual life. The word is overly, too much. He may he put he builds his whole life around it. Yes, because we must do our prescription duty, but without fruit. Yeah, but he, no, he's overly attached. Therefore, he's called. So, when you get an image, those of you who have a little bit of knowledge of Western culture, um, they portray a miser as what? Can you repeat this? I said, those of you who know a little bit about Western culture and how people refer to each other, what is a miser portrayed as? What, what is he? Cheapskate. I... Cheapskate. If you ask him for a donation, he doesn't have any. But if, you, if his family needs it, he pours it in. In other words, he's, he is, uh, he's not a person who is very compassionate, concerned, or generous to others. He's very, he's very inclusive. The family is everything. And this is where my happiness is, this is my world is out there. It's all something I'm not interested in. I mean, yes. I was just thinking, when you said material circles, I was just thinking some of these people are actually concerned to be very successful. I usually yeah. meet very successful, really people who are doing well in the business. Yeah, Prabhupada said, do skriti, no? Just like to create these uh, electronic devices or big bombs takes intelligence. But kritina means uh, auspicious, but do skritina means misused. So intelligence misused, as opposed to sukritina, which is intelligence used in the right way. So the word duskritina means misguided, but also very really intelligent. Yes, I mean, I'm not saying all of them are like that, but basically like 70% of very materially successful people are acting like criminals. Yeah. If you ask them to just give something out of benefit for whomever, they don't care. Yeah, that's, that's your problem. I solved my problem and you have to solve your own problem. Yeah, and they, they can even have no compassion, nothing. As long as they are getting things on their own way and they are receiving something, then it's okay. What's, that, what's, the, what's, the, what's the characteristic of that? Why? Because an animal can't be compassionate to another animal outside of his own family. You don't see, you don't see animals doing fundraising programs for animals. <laughs> but there, that little bird, mother bird, is concerned about her baby birds. That's all she can see. But she's not, you know, like going to the neighborhood birds and doing the same thing. So it's it's a con it's a consciousness of animal. It's the limited form of compassion. They, it's simply based on the bodily conception of life. And the idea is that this person who thinks like this and acts like this thinks that these things can save him from death. Or the uh, or these I can protect them from death because I'm I'm successful materially. It's a good good, good discussion. Prabhupada uses a very strong word here. Disease. Disease is not a very nice word. Mm. 
is like, you know, my, my country, my family, my... But devotees think everyone belongs to Krishna, therefore everyone is part of the same family. Even the animals. Okay. So the devotees are Sukritina. They're not creepers. Hmm. So again, that word deliberate, deliberation is here. With considerable dis uh, contemplation, discussion, we, the spiritual master says something, we say, yes, okay. And that's nice at the beginning. But if you're always like that, you won't last. <laughs> you have to understand why you're doing what you're doing and how best to do it. It's not always just, blind obedience is nice, but when you find yourself in a situation where you can't understand how to act, you can't apply blind obedience, you have to apply your intelligence. Every situation, therefore Prabhupada said we, we take decisions, we, we hear, and then we try to understand, and then we act. Where does he say that again about blind acceptance? What verse in the Bible do you have? Blind acceptance one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Prabhupada again criticizes that in one Bhagavad Gita verse. Which one? In the purport. Oh, in the purport. What is that? Is that No, it's, it's in the fourth chapter. Blind accept, absurd inquiries and blind following is rejected. Yeah. Absurd four, verse 34. Krishna says, Tadviri Bhati Patena Sevai. Upadekshyanti te gyanam gyani nam shtadalpatash. One should inquire from the spiritual master submissively with a desire to render service. So, inquiry, submission, and service. So, service is the result of submission and inquiry. But then again, inquiry has to be, has to come to the point where one accept, understands the, what is responded to. Do you inquire the spiritual master? Explains it. If you don't, you don't understand it, then you ask questions on based on what you hear until you finally understand it. At least theoretically. Okay. okay, who's that? Anybody know where that's from? I don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's near New Delhi. New Delhi? New Delhi. Oh. Something like that. Punjabi Bhav? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Punjabi Bhav. Where is this? Yeah. 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 Near, near, near Delhi. There's 15 temples in Delhi. At least 15. Maybe more. 15 minimum. 15 is Khan temples. 15 is Khan temples. Okay, here we go. Personal application. What does this have to do with you? Supply the Krishna conscious theology with reference to your external practice and eternal development so as to develop appropriate 
emotional qualities and behavior. Okay, two things. Apply the knowledge that is given in the Shastras and to your practice and your internal development. So as you develop it, so as to develop what are these things, qualities and behavior. So Vaishnava is understood by qualities, by behavior. And these two things are important, external practice, internal development. So if you want to be humble, you can practice being humble, but if it's not internally developed, you won't always pass the test. Externally, it's nice, and it's, we should practice it, but gradually we have to bring it to the internal platform through practice and through development of the quality. Okay. Simply quoting verses like a parrot will not be very much beneficial. One must apply. So we must know the Vijnana, how particular that is taught by the Goswamis. As a person puts on new garments, giving up old ones, the soul similarly accepts new material bodies, giving up the old and useless ones. <laughs> Ah, Mr. Perry. He looks quite intelligent, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. But Rani has a parrot too. Uh, yeah, so, quoting verses without understanding these three principles, Vyan, Vigyan, Samhita. So, Vigyan, Vyan is theoretical knowledge, Vigyan is practical application and realization. So, this is taught by the Goswami. So, we have to go from this stage to this stage. We have to go from just quoting the verse to learning the meaning of the verse and learning how to apply the verse. We're just reviewing the same principles. Yeah. Yeah, but you had to has to be coupled with the purification of heart, which is the internal development. The purification of heart comes by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So if you're just externally going through the motions and practicing, that looks good, but inside you're really not progressing towards Krishna consciousness. Sometimes people dress themselves up in the material world by external behavior, but inside there's a whole different person. Mm -hmm. So we want to mesh or blend that, inter that internal development, that external practice with our internal development, or vice versa. It all starts internally. It all starts mm -hmm. internally. Yeah, and then it comes out. We can practice in a mechanical way, the externals, but it, <coughs> <coughs> it, won't, it won't really be satisfying or won't reach the heart. You know, I'm asking That's called pretense. Okay, I'm asking this question because there is often a point when we want to know how much service should we do, you know, because it's connected to service, uh, how we surrender, all, pr all problematic, we do more service, do this, do that. But then after some time, you can see some people are just not interested anymore to continue like that, or let's say, because yeah, the internal development is not taking place. 
So read the books, chant the holy names of the Lord, offer prayers to the Lord, serve the Vaishnavas. These are all part of the, the internal development. Externally, you can go through the motions of service, and that, that's also purifying. But without, without the other part, getting rid of those anarthas, that internal development doesn't reach a certain... Then after a while, people will go away, or they will, they'll give up, they'll see. Someone is a nice devotee for so many years, and then after a while he becomes Kamsa. So, you know, so that means the internal development never was, it wasn't really happening, it was just external. Can we say that actually we should do external practice, but with this meditation inside, what actually, why we are doing it? Because yeah. we just a mechanical job. So that's part of the internal development. Yeah. That's why that goes back to this. This goes back to this one. Okay, now we're getting to the preaching application. So when, who knows what this scene is here? Where? No, it's not Nakshi Square. This is in Hippie Hill, San Francisco. Well, uh, Jagannath is there too. Okay. And then, the, so you see what what this picture means. You see two different, completely different types of preaching. Sitting down amongst people who are drug addicts, and here, respectable. So both are preaching to enhance the desire and ability to preach effectively according to your audience. So some of us can preach only here, and some of us can preach only here, and some of us can 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 some preach it at all. Because you said that, I said it. But the other, and then there's another one who where who they can do, they can see their audience, and so Prabhupada's in both places. So here you can't do much philosophy, so you do kirtan. Here it's more philosophy. The audience is important. Okay. Just. Okay, here we go. I wish to encourage all my disciples to be very careful and learn this philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Because there are so many preachers who will be required to bring this message to all the homes of the earth. Okay, there's, there's Prabhupada's request. We, we need more and more devotees to jump on board and become preachers. What does that mean? That means just make yourself available to others through various means. Through kirtan, through prasadam distribution, through philosophical speaking. In other words, be an instrument for the mercy of the Lord. Not everyone can recite the scriptures, but everyone can do something. So you can also cook and distribute prasadam to people. You can distribute books. You can go. You can do, do so many different things. But somehow become a message messenger. And but Prabhupada's being a little specific. Learn this philosophy carefully. Yeah. So he actually wants preachers. Okay. To build and maintain your faith and conviction in the process of Krishna consciousness, the Shastra, Shastra, pictures covering the Shastra. The 
Faith is the complete conviction that simply by the serving the Supreme Lord, Shri Krishna, one can achieve all perfections. After reading Bhagavad Gita, one should give up all other arrangements and adopt the service of the Supreme Lord Krishna. If one is con convinced of this philosophy of life, that is faith. Okay, that's only by serving the Lord. <coughs> that everything will come so that, that's complete right? one can achieve all perfection okay move on here how is faith created by association with the devotees Queen Kunti poet I wish that all these calamities would happen again and again, so that we could see you again and again. So, for seeing you means that we will not longer see repeated points of death. Mm -hmm. Just like we were driving today and it was just calamities, and my japa was getting better and better. <laughs> and I was thinking, I was thanking Roberto. Roberto was. I was just thinking, hey, he's making so many mistakes, but I'm, my chanting is getting better. <laughs> so the calamities help bring about <laughs> some enthusiasm. <laughs> so Queen Kunti, why is she praying like that? Because she's in a situation where she's Krishna's aunt, she's an honorable person. She has two families, the Vishnis and the and the, the Yadus and the Vishnis, both families. She's uh, thinking, because I have all this success, I need some calamity, or else how am I going to remember you? Life is too nice. But uh, do we pray like that? Or should we pray like that? We should, and we don't really have to, but we should pray for service. And whatever Krishna gives us in the form of service, we should accept that. And if the service is difficult, we should accept it. If the service is easy, we should accept it. Not like we look for easy service and think, oh, the other stuff I don't want. Happy birthday. Her birthday was yesterday. There's so many birthday people here. Is it Jai Ranta? Yes. Okay, so I think the calamities that we need to accept is that we should be just steady in our practice of spiritual life. And whatever happens, or doesn't happen, we shouldn't be discouraged. If we get discouraged because of, we get encouraged because of success and discouraged because of difficulties or reverses, then that's not Krishna consciousness. But if you want to pray like that, and you're willing to accept whatever happens, then it's recommended. <laughs> but if you pray like that, you definitely get your prayers answered. Because <laughs> Krishna likes Because this, this is the fast way of purification. <laughs> you want to take the fast track. But it's, it shows the, the heart of the great souls. They don't want to forget Krishna. That's the whole thing. That's this is the thing here. So that we could see you again and again. Or seeing you that means we don't have to see this horrible material world anymore. Evaluation. Help you develop analytical interpretation and evolutive skills, particularly in respect to the practical 
So, the valuation helps you to become analytic, to interpret, understand, and to evaluate and evaluate skills. So we're talking about now. Do you remember our schematic? We had what was the first thing? Was do you know what was the next one? Understanding. Understanding. What was the next one? And realization. And then, that's where we're at now. So we went through all those four. Now we're in the last one. Who's this? What is this? What does this say? Adwaitan? Adwaitan. Philosophy. Well, what is this? So here applies this, here applies this. So he's, contempl he's contemplating and evaluating scriptures, he's contemplating and evaluating material energy. So both are exalted in their own category because of evaluation and analytic interpretation. So this is the goal, is to come to that stage. Okay. Okay, what is, here we go. And to develop your ability to make appropriate choices in your personal life. So all these things help us to come to that stage. The ability to give counsel that is actually relevant and practically useful to society. So he's giving counsel to this disciple. <coughs> Okay, so this is the results. Okay, someone can read. Father Krishna advised Arjuna, hear him, Arjuna did, uh, did not take it. This is consciousness. Even though there is duty, we have to see what will be the effect of that duty. Nothing should be done blindly. This is the nature of a devotee. Is that clear? Nothing should be done blindly. One should see the result. And if there's some question, one should ask. If there's no question, then one can move forward. But you'll see that if you go back to here, you go back to this, the same road may lead this way or may lead this way. Go here. The branch is this way. So as we develop these skills, we find ourselves with various choices in life, how to apply those skills in the best possible way. So we use our intelligence how to serve in the best way. There may be different ways to carry out the instruction, but to contemplate and think what is the best way. You know the story of the uh, the um, the foolish disciple. Yes. <laughs> you all know that story. Yes. Everybody said yes. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati tells this. So the. Um, <coughs> A guru is riding a horse with his disciples sitting on the back and they're going to the forest. So the guru turns to the disciple, hand me my Bhagavad Gita. And the disciple says, Guru Maharaj, it fell out back there. So the guru says, why didn't you say that? And you said, well, you didn't tell me to. So the, the, the Sadhu is thinking, what a fool. Harry said, anything that falls off this horse, you pick up. 
So the horse is going and the horse stops to have to respond to nature. The guy, the disciple gets down with his charter and starts going like this. Which the guru says, hey, what are you doing? You said, well, everything that falls from the horse you should pick up. Get back up here, you idiot. Give me my pencil and paper. Okay, so he hands him the pencil and paper. So he writes down, all right, Bhagavad Gita, charter, bead bag, uh, you know, prashadam, gives him a list. He says, here, read that. Anything, any of these that fall off, you, you stop and pick it up. So the horse is going, then the horse decides to go real fast. And then the horse jumps and the guru falls off. <laughs> So the disciples looking at the list. No guru on the list. He must be very submissive. I think this is some of what's being said here. It seems to be very funny. So Prabhupada said we should use our intelligence to carry out our service. Okay, that's an extreme example, but anyway. <laughs> it makes the point. This is in this is in Berry Place in London. I think. It's definitely London. I think it's Berry Place. Moon and mission. Okay, by reading Prabhupada's books, that helps us to understand his mood and his mission. Hearing his lectures also. <coughs> okay. In conclusion, if a disciple is very serious to execute the mission of the spiritual master, he immediately associates with the Supreme Personality of God by arming or Godly. This is the only secret of success to seeing the Supreme Personality of God. Instead of being engaged to see the Lord, eager. Oh, eager to see the Lord in some bush or in Dali, while at the same time engaging in self gratification. If one instead sticks to the principle of following the words of the spiritual master, you will see the Supreme Lord without the Oh, So, being seriously, if one is serious to execute the mission, and then immediately he can associate with the Supreme Lord. This is the secret of success, success. Not trying to pretentiously put yourself in a situation of trying to see Krishna in Vrindavan at the same time not following the principles. So this is the secret of success. And it says that one who is absorbed in executing the mission of the spiritual master, he is actually coming face to face with the Supreme Lord. Krishna reveals himself. That. that is a very powerful statement. Any questions about this? One? <laughs> Comments? Makes sense? We have to learn to become Krishna consciousness means that each year each year we should be doing more. Not that we go down. We get we start off real high, then so we should always be increasing in terms of our quality and our quantity. Mostly quality, but quantity also. And that will keep us free from the effects of the material energy.
Okay, this is going to be explained in the next verses, next uh, slide. So, keeping the integrity of what is being doing what is right even when it's difficult, that's integrity. But academic integrity will be explained here. Some of us like that very really much. That is Vaishnavism. It is not uh, cowardice. It is not cowardice. We need Okay, so now this is a statement. Now this is a exercise. The first thing is ways that this quote may be misused. So one of the way, well, how can this quote be misused? Evaluate the consequences of these misuses. Select the most likely consequence. What is Prabhupada's real point? So here we go. This is an act. So this is an example of trying to understand really deeper what is being said. This is a test now. Yes. What is Prabhupada saying? What, first, let's do the thing. Why ways that this may be misused? How will how are these misused? We could just go out with a shotgun and start shooting things. <laughs> Everybody who is not? Chanting. Chanting. Well, said that, kill me. Yeah, I was saying that this quote could be misused in the sense that um, in the name of religion, you can justify killing, murder, or which other people do that? Oh, definitely. What is that called? Fundamentalism. Uh, it's worse than that. <laughs> it, it stems from that, but it's worse than that. There are fundamentalists who are not fanatics. Uh, yeah. So, okay. And when it if one thinks of them, one evaluate the consequences of this misuse. Just like I give an example. In Nurindavan, there was one devotee, he was quite a rogue, and he was attacking this other devotee's wife and uh, forcing her. And so, uh, this devotee came to the temple, commander, leader, and said, hey, it says in the scriptures, if one, you know, attacks your wife, you can kill him. So, it was acknowledged that that is true, because it says that in the Bhagavad Gita, but, but the person said, this is Western society. They don't follow that, so therefore we will be implicated by the law. So, but the devotee still didn't listen, and therefore he arranged for that person to be killed. He got killed. <coughs> and then so many problems came to the community. Court cases, jails, fines, and investigations. So, so the consequences were not good, although the person was supposedly following the scriptures. And there's an example, a real life example. I'm not mentioning names, but I know the people involved with that whole thing because I was there at the time. Yes. I mean, when we are reading this, we should always keep in mind the higher principle, isn't it? Because to understand how one is acting in his life, you know, 
for example, we said if you got going to go outside and kill all the ones that you consider not to be devotees, but then what is the process of preaching? Because in a way everyone is a pure soul inside, but still you don't give them a chance. So we should understand that Hyatt is a this, preaching. Yeah, but this is going a little farther saying there's demons out there. So he was talking about the demons. It could be demons from within. Hmm? It could be the demons from within. The demons from within. Uh, okay, that's number four. What is Srila Prabhupada's real point? Okay, so here's number four. What's the real point? So killing the demons within, that's the real point? Well, uh, no, um, that's something. Is it? Don't hide behind the scriptures. No, Prabhupada, what's Prabhupada's real point? You can see, if you think about it, it becomes easy to understand. That's nice. <laughs> we want that, yeah. But in which circumstances was this told? This was a lecture, Bhagavad Gita lecture, July 11, 1973 in London. What is Prabhupada saying? I have an idea. Well, maybe you have another one. Okay, could we that we shouldn't be afraid to protect what is valuable, and what, what we cherish, and what we think is right, and to keep, you know... You're coming close, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. No, our, our purpose is not to uh, other time just uh, being kind and gentle, but to fellow Christians or the... Speak strongly against your religion. Lash out against what is not right. <laughs> That's what Prabhupada's saying. We just, you know, if there's people like, oh, you just should, you know, accept everybody and speak nicely, you tell the philosophy. But we say, no, you're wrong. You are not acting according to scripture, you're selfish, you're a demon, like that. So not, not being afraid to point out, based on Shastra, people who are against God and their religion. Speaking strongly. I think Prabhupada said, you can't just be one-sided and give one aspect. You have to, so the devotees should be trained up in both ways, to give protection and to give encouragement. Think on me and act. Huh? Think on me and act, as Krishna yeah. said to Arjuna. Yeah. Think of me and act. But also, what he's saying is to, we have to not only speak about the truth, but we have to speak about what is not truth. We have to speak about what is not truth along with what is truth. That's my interpretation, yeah? Well, this is just me playing devil's advocate. And um, okay. is, isn't that statement a bit dangerous? Because if someone's immature, then we misuse it. Would it be like better if that statement was stated as it is, like how you explain it? It requires discussion. Many of Prabhupada's statements are taken verbatim without understanding the context or the intention or Prabhupada's intention for the message. Therefore, we need to discuss it. That's why ways that this quote can be misused. How many ways? It's not just way, it's ways. This can be misused. It could be, a way, it could be used to exploit other people. Hmm? How? Well, to say that Okay. They should be prepared to kill the demons. So, in other words, if someone doesn't like someone and labels them a demon, and so this is Prabhupada said that you should be killed because you're not following Krishna. So, but 
what, what does Mahaprabhu say? We're killing the demons, but how? We're destroying the demonic mentality. Yeah. That's our killing process through strong speaking, strong preaching. So Prabhupada is saying we, can, we have to speak strongly. But, but just like here's another interpretation. If somebody attacks our temple and we say, Aribo, I'm not violent, come. No, we should be able to be ready to fight and protect at the same time. Uh, you can do it if there is no wealth. Like when Krishna came to the Rodana and the Rodana said, I will not give you enough land even for the Rodana. If there is no way, but you must ask also one qualified Brahmana his decision should be made like this. Not so you should take advice before I think. Yeah, yeah. Not just do it because Chad has acted. That's a good point. That's a good point. That the Kshatriya spirit should be curbed and directed by the Brahmins and intelligence. The Prabhupada said our devotees should be trained that if we are attacked, we have to protect our interests. So you can take it from that point too. Because you have to understand what it says here, when need be. I think we're all stuck on this one. <laughs> At least some of us. <laughs> to give protection and if need be, you should be able to kill the demons if, if need be. It's probably like the last resort, is it? Well, Shatri, what does the word Shatri mean? Protection. Right. Not aggression. Yeah, yeah. Shatri is not aggressor, but the Shatri Shat means to protect, and Triya means from harm. Those who protect from harm. Like I associate with, I mean, I come in contact with Shatris all the time. And I was just with one in America. And he's a very good fighter. But he's not an aggressor. And if there's some aggression towards him, he'll always try to use other means to stem it. But the last resort is you know, the actual martial effect. That's, that's the last resort. So Shatriya doesn't use aggression as the first principle, but as the last principle. So as it says here, when need be. When there's no other alternative. And I think your point was well taken, Duryodhana was given many options. But when Krishna was in the role of a Kshatriya. And then ultimately, he rejected everything. And only then did Krishna resort to the battle. There was, the battle was the last, the battle of Kurukshetra was the last decision to be taken. It wasn't the first decision. A devotee tries to avoid aggression, but sometimes it's not possible. Mm -hmm. Isn't like Mahatma Gandhi also like he was avoiding conflict when it was But he, he failed. Because it was he failed. You see here, this this image sort of illustrates that. This is Krishna coming at Bhishma Deva with a chariot wheel. But Krishna, this was his last choice. Krishna didn't want to fight. He said he wasn't going to fight. But when he had to fight, he did. Only when Krishna had to fight did he actually fight.
He's not a coward. It's, I think it's pretty explanatory. As if, there's a need, if there's a need be and we have to fight, we fight. Mm -hmm. But it's not that we are aggressors or even resort to that. A coward, I'll give you an example. Mahatma Gandhi was, here's an example. One reporter came up to him. I think it was Mahatma Gandhi, I'm not sure. Was a famous pacifist. And this pacifist used to say, under no circumstances will I ever become violent. Under no circumstances. So one reporter challenged him and said, my dear sir, what happens, I see you have a daughter, what happens, it wasn't Mahatma Gandhi, it was somewhere. What happens if I try to attack your daughter? What will you do? So the, uh, the uh, pacifist said, under no circumstances will I become violent. And then he said it again. If someone comes and try to attack your daughter and you know, molest your daughter, what will you do? He said, under no circumstances will I become aggressive. And the reporter said, my dear sir, you are violent. <laughs> Are violent, you fail to protect those who need protection. You fail to protect those who need protection. There's where cowardism is defined. And again, the thought part says, it concludes, when need be. So you have to really go through this and discuss it before you really come to some understanding. Okay. Example of poor or dishonest use of scripture. Okay. Oh, I went backwards. Okay. Janaki, now read this now. The tendency to quote only half the shloka and the second half modifies or modifies the first. It could be that you don't remember the second half, that's what you're going to say. You don't want to remember. <laughs> that's called the chicken analogy, isn't it, Mark? The chicken and egg analogy. Yeah. You want just the part that fits your desired result, and the other part doesn't. To quote half a sloka, well, what is, what is the, what's, what's an example of how it's spoken? Sarva Dharma Pradeshyam Mamme Kam Saranam Bhaja. Surrender unto me. And then we don't say Masuchaha. <laughs> Masuchaha means don't hesitate. I'll surrender. Don't hesitate, don't fear, don't worry. Okay. Here you go. Someone? There is an element of God had replied, the renunciation of work and work in devotion are both good for liberation. But also too, work is devotion in devotional service is better than renunciation of work. Yeah, we, we take out part of the verse, we choose only verses that fortify our own thing. Prabhupada said, take for shot, so that's what I do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just a, an extreme example, but what would be another example? Give an, ex an example of supporting your own opinion within a larger context. Can anyone give an example? Oh, Okay. Oh, uh, it says that the, the law doesn't have um, a form. A form. But that's just one half. But then the second half is that it doesn't have a material form. 
So the my wives and the personalists will say, quote the first thing. Very good. Nice and nice example. And so the, the Lord doesn't have the form, true, but what it means, he doesn't have the material form. But he has the form. Citing context relevant materials as absolute truth. <clears throat> In other words, this statement is the absolute truth. And citing it within context. Or quoting out of context the opposite. So let me see, what would be an example of contextual relevant material as absolute truth? Right, you gave the example. You know the six aggressors. Yeah, okay. For quoting out of context. Just like it says that we should fast on Srila Prabhupada's uh, uh, appearance day or disappearance day. And someone will say, well, Prabhupada is not my spiritual master if I don't have to fast. Okay. Arguing or debating largely or wholly on the basis of emotional appeal. In other words, trying to establish something by playing up people's emotions rather than um, someone read that one. What's the next word? What does it say there? Push the button to go down the page and match it. Mm -hmm. We just don't have a cover here. Can't see, can you see? Quoting a verse that doesn't actually explain which word is saying, or whose meaning is unclear, and or ambiguous. Ambiguous means unclear. Okay. okay. I'll do this. Again. Quoting a verse that doesn't actually explain what we are discussing. We're discussing um, Van Ashram. So we, we would choose a verse like Samhita or other scriptures. Mano Samhita is general law, not necessarily scripture. Okay, I think that's self explanatory. Responsibility for learning. We must take responsible for learning and developing healthy study habits. Develop a taste and appreciation for the study of Prabhupada's books and understand the relevance of Shastra within one's life will inspire us to study well. Understanding how we learn and what we are must do to facilitate our learning will assist us in developing the study skills necessary. Understanding how we learn, what we must do to facilitate our learning, you know, go away and do a reading retreat, uh, or learn from certain books that 
are interesting, that will help us develop certain study skills. So here it was just talking about study skills, developing taste, developing appreciation. These things are relevant to inspire us to study and to develop those skills for studying. So this is taking a responsibility for learning and not just, okay, I read, that means I, I did my duty now. Okay. What, what, uh, which, which slide number is that? Can you see the number on there? Uh, 86. 86, okay. 95 is the last slide, so well, we got about 10 more slides to go. Okay, responsibility for learning, developing. So when you, I mean, really, I would say do this. Schedule every day your reading and schedule in such a way that you review what you learned, what you read, in such a way that you develop a knowledge of it and understand it. Write down questions, if there's questions re relevant to that study, and see what helps you to study. Just like another way to, to study is cross-reference. Cross-reference means you read something. Where else did I read this? What other verse is similar to this verse, which supports this verse? So this is like cross-reference. Yeah. I think teachers do that when they have to prepare material. When they prepare material for tests, they, they pull out the material from different books that they're using. Okay. So this is a, this is a review. Someone read? Knowledge and understanding, personal application, preaching application, faith and conviction, Prabhupada's mood and mission, evaluation, academic and moral integrity, responsibility for learning, Shastra Chakshu, Wow. We got a lot on our plate, don't we? But it's good. Sri Sri. I went back somewhere. What happened? Oh, there you go. Look at this guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's him later. <laughs> Okay, did we read this before? It's repeated here. Someone read again. Jai Ram, read this. Can you see it? Another Manjuri, can you read it? All the devotees connected with this Krishna consciousness movement must read all the books that we will translate. Chaitanya Chaitanya Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita and others. Otherwise, after some time, they will sink in deep sleep and fall down from their position. Thus, they will miss the opportunity to attain an eternal, blissful life of transcendental knowledge. knowledge. So that's, that's Srimad. Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Lila, chapter 25, verse 278. So that is giving us, Prabhupada, giving us a position. We need to read the books or else we'll gradually sink down into a more material concept of life. You read that? Am I going the wrong way? What happened here? Use that and somehow it's not working here. Okay, that's the next one. What does that say? Can't read it. Shastra Chakshu? What's this picture here? Sanyasi, Jesse Sanyasi. 
Which, which verse is this in Bhagavad Gita? 18. 5? Yeah. 18. 5.18. So what does it say? This is actual knowledge, to see in the heart of all living entities the Supreme Lord. The Chandala, the dog, cow, cow eater, the Brahman, elephant. Okay. I can't. Can you read that? Okay, we'll skip it. Okay, here we go. What are the results of neglecting this aim? What are the benefits of following? For each aim, present a skit, song, illustrating one of the conditions. Now, this is an exercise, so we'll just skip that. But anyway, students should write the results. Okay, so. See what she's including at the end here is an exercise where you you actually carry out some of the things you heard. And here are some of the things that is being mentioned. Common sense is always imperfect, whereas description of the chapters is always perfect and complete. Is that it? Yes. Yes, that's number 95. Okay, the last one. If there is any incongruency, it's due to our perfection, not the Shastras. This is the method for approaching the wisdom. Okay. Why? Because we are limited, just like we use an example. Two ants are talking to one another, and one ant says, you know, I think there's something up there. The other ant says, no, nah, you just, you have too much sugar. There's nobody up there. <laughs> so from our ant-like existence, we also are seeing in a very limited way what is actually reality, which is beyond the range of our senses. So in that case, what we see, what we experience, and what we understand can only be verified through Shastra. Shastra is the guide, Shastra is the means for understanding truth and knowledge. Shastra comes from Krishna. Shastra is not man-made. So these are some of the points. Okay, so we went through 95 slides. I gave you the long version. The short version was 65. But I thought today, since we're all here, we go the hard route. Any questions? Yes. Uh, I was thinking about these last two lines, because previously there was uh, in the presentation that uh, we, we shouldn't take anything blindly. But uh, where is the balance that I don't take it blindly, but if there is anything uh, contradictory, then... Maybe a question. Maybe a question with a desire to understand, not in a challenging mood. If you challenge, you block reception. And that's... You'll never understand things. You, you say, I don't understand this. I can't understand why I should do this. Please help me to clarify. I, I know Krishna is God, but I need more understanding of how I can understand that He is God. So we're always questioning from a position of wanting to know more, either through how to practically apply it. Oh, all right, I'm given this instruction. Uh, play the Madanga. But how to play the Madanga? play according to the tune that's being sung by the leader and follow nicely. Not play the Madonna according to how I want to play and expect the leader to follow me. So, therefore, 
one who wants to serve in the best possible way follows the protocol for proper understanding. If you don't know the protocol, then you ask and get clarification. So, therefore, that goes back to what Prabhupada said, blind following. No, get the instructions, understand the instructions, and then understand how to carry them out. Yeah. Anything else? You found it interesting, this, this presentation? Yes, yes, Well, we were invaded by the Londoners. <laughs> I'm just looking around, I just see a whole, a whole different uh, scenery here. Okay. Just in time for Prashad. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I'm amazed that anybody even found this place. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the place of no return. Once you get here, you, just, you don't go anywhere else. This is, this is it. Your room is upstairs, and from here you go back to that. <laughs> It's actually Somadashi's picnic place. <laughs> so. Okay, so we, we heard about the importance of... What are the main principles again? I think we can go back a few verses, a few slides, and get the main principle. Go back to that one slide. Keep going. Keep going. There it is. Okay. Knowledge and understanding of Shastra, practical application, preaching application, how to develop the faith and condition, what is Prabhupada's mood, how to evaluate what we hear, how to keep the integrity in it, of the moral and academic aspect of what we are exposed to, becoming responsible for what we learn, that means carrying it out, and then learning and then understanding Shastra to the level of realization. So that's a summary of what we just did for the last couple hours. And what was the other five points that make up knowledge? Do you know anybody to remember those five things? What's the, what's the first one? Theoretical knowledge, you read the book. What's the second one? Understanding. Understanding what you read. Third one? Uh, learning how to apply what you, what you hear. Getting realization after through through the process of application. And what's the last one? Develop skills and and values. Values and skills. So these are the these are the stages of of approaching learning. Okay. What time is it? Yes, uh, um, um, Michelle. Uh, how to explain to someone, uh, some, someone may think, uh, okay, if I don't do anything, then I cannot uh, make anything false. So, <laughs> it to I never make a mistake because I never do anything. <laughs> 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 You see how perfect I am. <laughs> don't ask me to do anything, don't ask me to say anything. <laughs> I want to be perfect. <laughs> what are you doing in the material world? <laughs> no, so that, yeah, that's, that, that doesn't have any logic to it. You have to make an effort to follow the principles which govern the process of making advancement in devotional service. And one of them is knowing Shastra and learning how to carry it out. If you make a mistake, if you make a mistake doing the wrong thing, that's sometimes condemnable. But if you make a mistake doing the right thing, that's just a process of learning. 
So when we make a mistake doing the right thing, we're just learning how to eventually get it right. And if you don't do anything, then... Is that what your point was? Yeah, we want, we want... You have to take responsibility for your own spiritual life. And take the responsibility for others who are connected with you in, in life. Whether it's your friends, family members, or people in general. Yes, Tulsi. In the beginning, we see that uh, uh, each uh, next generation is uh, more and more, uh, you know, uh, We'll go back to the yes, beginning yes. again. But what, what is prognosis for the next generation? Go back to slide number. Okay. But do the full screens so instead of. Okay, here we go. So you have four things issues, instructions, contents, and. Okay. Okay, so he... Below, he, below see, um, everything. What is the uh, for next generation? Okay, so we're getting to that slide. Where is it? Okay, here it is. Yes. So the first generation, which is Prabhupada, he speaks the issues, he now gives the instructions, gives the context by which the instructions are in, and what is the intention. The second generation is us, is me, direct Prabhupada disciples. The intention is somewhat lost because the person who spoke it is no longer available, so we have to try to understand the intention. And then as the third generation, even the context gets a little bit obscured. And the fourth generation is the disciples of the disciples, like that. So even the instructions need to be regenerated. I want to speak of the context and the intention. So as time goes on, unless we keep discussing Prabhupada's books and learning how to apply it, these things will naturally get lost. I mean, just like there's that statement in the fourth canto, nobody likes this statement. And I mean, I just got a letter the other day, saying that we want your opinion whether we should take this statement out of Prabhupada's books because people are alarmed by what Prabhupada said. And some devotees say, no, we shouldn't change the books. Others say we should rewrite the statement with an explanation. Others say we should just eliminate the statement. So what was Prabhupada's intention? Nobody can come to a conclusion about why Prabhupada said what he said the way he said it. And I gave my opinion. And, uh, and I, my opinion was based on some of the, of the information that I've gathered over the years based on this statement. Which Prabhupada had a particular intention based on what he read in a particular dictionary. <laughs> so that was my conclusion, and therefore Prabhupada said it. But, and people are evaluating what was his intention. And, you know, it's, it's even becoming a, like, you know, a major issue now. You want to know the statement? Yes. yes. <laughs> you sure? You might leave. <laughs> But they can because they will get lost. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a bomb. It's a big bomb. It's an explosion. You sure? You know the ver you know you know the one? No, it's small, not I don't know if I should have brought this up. <laughs> but we're fighting with this. It's in the fourth canto, 22nd chapter. Mm, try 2, 4, 22, 51. 
we need a database for this. Because it's in the 22nd chapter of the fourth chapter. <clears throat> you know the you know what I'm talking about, right? It is a big issue, Marjorie, because recently um, we had a newspaper editor magazine come to the man and do a whole kind of you know um, story of Iskon and Harry Krishna. And then that story wasn't selling, so they made a very controversial one. And they actually made a statement in the magazine. And it's widely kind of published in London. Yeah, yeah. That was in the letter I received. So, but I've heard talk to different people about what is Prabhupada's intention, and I get different answers. 42251, try that one. I'm not sure of the verse, but I think it's that. Anybody got the database? It's explosive. It's the last line in the purport. <coughs> last series of lines. But I might have the wrong verse. So I don't know. Is that it? Hmm? It has the word rape. It has the word rape in it. It's about rape. It has, it's in the last. Is this fifty one? Krishna's hmm. covering my intelligence. <laughs> I would have to have a book. If you have a book, we can find it. But we're going. Can we go verse by verse? That's it. Get out of this one. Not in the 22nd chapter. <laughs> Where is it? It's in the story of King Prachi and the Barhisha, right? Janaki <laughs> So, 
at least you won't be blown away. <laughs> but it's very, it's, it's very explosive. I could try to paraphrase it, but then I, I might be damaged to it. Okay, so how many of you still have to take lunch yet? One. Did the other, did the London ones get lunch? Did you guys get lunch? Okay, we took a break. We took a break at 12.30 for the devotees who fasted all morning. And so maybe some of you are fasting too. So if you're fasting, I think we need to take a break now and also have lunch. Everyone can settle in, relax, and then the comedy show starts tonight. <laughs> so, stay tuned. You found it? In this regard, the word vikyatam is a man is always famous for his aggression towards a beautiful woman. Such aggression is sometimes considered rape. Although rape is not legally allowed, it is the fact that a woman likes a man who is very expert at rape. There you go. So no woman likes to get raped. <laughs> That, that I can understand from the psychology. In fact, it ruins, it ruins many people's lives. But Prabhupada says, although rape is not legally allowed, it's a fact that a woman likes a man who is very expert at rape. So what is Prabhupada saying? So that's been explosive. And what Prabhupada is using a certain definition that is given in the, a certain dictionary, I forgot the name of the dictionary, but what Prabhupada is saying is not rape but sex life. The man is very expert at sex life, a woman is very attracted to that. That's what basically Prabhupada is saying. But the word rape is used and it has another connotation, so. So this has been a, a controversy. So even going back to our original discussion, the intention that Prabhupada had when he made that statement is not clear. And people are questioning our movement based on that statement. People are questioning our movement. What, and people are saying, just shows that your movement is about exploitation of women. So these are people from the outside. But we know that's not true. Prabhupada was very, very kind to ladies, exceptionally kind, and never exploited anyone for any, city, any situation. Prabhupada spoke strongly based on scripture and based on what he had heard from other acharyas. But there was there's no ill intention in Prabhupada. So we accept that. We accept the idea that Prabhupada never had any ill intentions. He was always well-meaning. But the way he expressed his statements seems to be confusing to a lot of people. Either because of culture or connotations based on language. Connotations based on language. So, I mean, I, I was going back and forth with one devotee who kept challenging me on this statement. And I was trying to help him understand that Prabhupada is not talking about aggressive, forceful sex life. He's talking about something else. But the way it's worded, people take it differently. And use it as an excuse not to accept Krishna consciousness. If you want an excuse not to do something, 
that you feel like you should do, but at the same time you don't want to do, you find certain things that support your excuse. So this is what is being said here. The Prabhupada said something else. He, he said a few good statements about Hitler. And Hitler had certain qualities that Prabhupada pointed out, but he never supported Hitler in his deeds as what he did. Just like Prabhupada said, Hitler was a gentleman. He had the atomic bomb, but he didn't use it. But the Americans used it against the Japanese and destroyed hundreds of thousands of people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But Hitler had that same bomb. He could have used it in his aggressive you know, war life, but he didn't use it because he knew that it would, it would kill too many people. So Prabhupada pointed out, in that case, he used some, what we say, human consideration. And so people say, oh, Prabhupada supported Hitler. No, he didn't. He just pointed out certain things about Hitler that may be commendable from a moral or a religious point of view, but never saying that the man was, a, you know, a great saint. That was the Prabhupada's point. So people will take that and say, you know, just see, your spiritual master is a Nazi. So this is what happens when you don't know the intention. And as time goes on, the intention becomes less and less hard to recapture. It becomes less and less hard to recapture. So that's why it requires us to read, study, discuss, and understand Prabhupada's books for our own edification and for our relationships with others when we come in contact with these questions. Okay, so we can break now. And everyone can take Prashad. Thank you very much. What time did we come back? What time is it now? Three o'clock? Hmm? Three o'clock? Yes, now it's three o'clock. Okay. Yes. So we come back at three o five. I'm sorry. <laughs> three fifteen. <laughs> I was seeing everybody was so glum, so I wanted to wake you up just to see if you were awake. <laughs> okay, so we'll come back at what time? Where's some Madhavi, our commander in chief here? Huh? Four o'clock? Four one. Okay, we we'll come back at four one. All right. Thank you, Shri Prabhupada's books, Ki Jai. Jai. I will read them, Ki Jai. I will read them, Ki Jai. I will read and study them, Ki Jai. I will read them, study them, know them, and preach them, Ki Jai. Ki Jai. Jai.